G'day, welcome to Australian Transformers Weekly. We are bringing you Transformers news from around the world in Australia. Something like that, I don't know. Uh, this week in edited, I don't know. Um, we are recording episode 197. We are recording live on Saturday, the 10th of August, 2019. This week, we'll have more to talk about on the HasLab Unicron. Things have gotten a little bit interesting, especially if you're in Australia. There's more studio series mm. figures on the way, and there's a whole lot of new bot bots coming. I think we're also, we've also got a bunch of siege figures to look at as well. All that and more is coming up after this. I'm Jason. Joining me this week, we have actually just a two up this week. We have Ash coming to us from Tasmania. For a minute, I can't remember if you're in Launceston or Hobart. I am in Launceston. I'm I'm as far north as I can be from being this far south, and it has been a frigid wasteland recently. Absolutely petrifying cold. Sydney and- actually had its hot, hottest, coldest day of the year this uh, today as well. Uh, it was a top of 14 degrees. It's and hottest. I'm th- Day of the so, year? No, no, it's coldest day of the year. Cold. Okay, how cold was it then? Fourteen degrees, top of fourteen, and I'm guessing that that's a balmy fourteen for you down there. We had a top of twelve, but we just had winds that cut through. It was horrible. So we we got the same winds up here as well. Like um, they've been they've been shredding the east coast, uh, cancelling flights, everything. I am. I'm happy. Like so, last night we we attempted to record the podcast last night. Just t- technical issues, which is probably a good thing because um, while I'm sitting here and you can't hear much except probably the sound of this dude purring into the microphone. Um, mm. The while we attempted to do that last night, all right, you can get there. While we attempted to do that last night, the only other thing that you could hear in the background was whoosh. I'm um, usually pretty yeah. good at guessing noises, but I don't know what those noises are supposed to be. Yeah, no, it was just it was the wind. The wind oh, it was, was wind. Okay, wind. really. I somebody strong. was like testing some kind of science fiction weapons, like outside your door or something. Like, boom! It was like, so, I, I would, I would hazard a guess that whoever is in control of Sydney's weather control machine has lost control. So it is, it is kind of a sci-fi, uh, a sci-fi. Um, Timmy the intern at it again. It's at least look. It's a, it's at least a mini series. I wouldn't I wouldn't go to a full season, but yeah, right. Web series at the at the very most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut it in. Cut it into six minutes. Put a put a top and tail of two minutes of constant animation. Um, you know, ten, around it to ten minutes. Produce about thirty minutes of footage. Yeah. Uh, add some CGI, and you've got Stargate Origins. But yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're doing a tra- we're doing a Transformers podcast, aren't we? So we are talking about what we've been up to this week. We've been talking about the weather. I am in under twelve hours. I am embarking upon a trip to Birmingham to uh, attend TF Nation next weekend. So I will not be here, but I will be I will be uh, living it up, sitting in the the Hilton Bar in Birmingham uh, next to a bunch of uh, bunch of Transformers fans and a bunch of Transformers obviously you get to host a live podcast from there from uh the so if i d- if i do like like it will be re- it will be terrible like like it'll be noisy it, it'll be noisy there won't be uh, I, I won't so, have a laptop like it so would just be ridiculous so it's a rock concert rock concerts are noisy but they're good nobody you know, hosts a podcasts at rock concerts well maybe they should maybe there's something <laughs> we can look forward to That's, it's okay just when you're there just Find few or Optobotamus or just literally some homeless guy on the street asking what he thinks of the Unicron situation. Boom, guest stars. It's what we need. It's how we're going to thrive. I can uh, I can probably get Thu to do it. <laughs> he, just he, he even just for him to like Australians. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I met him last year. He's a lovely guy. Hey, um, good. I, be- I believe we're I believe we're Pokemon Go friends. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's how you know you've connected with somebody. Yes. When, <laughs> dude, have you got a have you got a gold duck? I need a gold yeah, duck. Yeah, yeah. No, so we so we I think the intention was that I could bring a Kangas Khan from uh, from Australia, and mm-hmm. uh, and I could pick up a Mister Mine. But then, uh, so uh, look, I haven't played Pokemon for a long time, but Kangas Khans were not very not very um, 
not very well uh, distributed in Australia, but Mr. Mime was fucking everywhere. <laughs> that reminds me of actually sitting on a couple of Tauros, which is apparently the American exclusive. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple of those. Maybe I should start eBaying them. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, so I don't know if Niantic will crack down on uh, people eBaying stuff as much as they did in Ingress. Um, but yeah. Um, just pay me in Transformers. It's fine. Tell few I accept Legends for That's years. the best thing. I, I, shall, I shall let him know. Uh, send your friend code and we'll see how you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, look, I, look, I met a lot of, I met a lot of, uh, a lot of prominent YouTubers last week and and other guys in the in the community uh like i met maz and 60 and uh Soundwave, hey. Soundwave 1980 and uh some other guys other boys like that um so yeah i'm really looking forward to going back and meeting more people this year and uh, like last year there was this last year there was this distinct event on the saturday night it was uh the stan bush concert this, oh. year, this year, there's no concert, but we do have a script reading for season four of Animated. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. So I, I, so I will be refreshing what happened in Animated season three on my way over to TFN because got, it's been a long time. On the plane. I, yeah, yeah, I've got yeah, I've got plenty of things to watch on the plane. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's gonna happen. And um, it's look, it's going to be fun. So, uh, yeah, look, I, look, I will try to, I will try to record a little bit of a uh, little bit of stuff and see if I can stitch it together to maybe just be a video that we show during the podcast next week or, mm. yeah, something like that. We'll, we'll see how we go. I dig it. I look forward to it. Give us some content. Well, here's some content for you. Oh wow! Leaping straight into it, and boom! Let's, let's, let's go straight into it. We're going to move swiftly on and get to the news. Straight into news. Hasbro news. That will take us into some news. What news comes from by yonder? Straight into it with the uh, fancy screen effects, but for those who aren't watching, what is this? It's EB Games' website, but it's War for Cybertron Unicron? So EB Games surprised everyone this week by uh, coming out of almost nowhere, except for the fact that it was foreshadowed a day before by Griff from Ozformers, uh, coming out of coming out of nowhere with a pre-order for War for Cybertron Unicron. Now we've talked about Unicron a lot on the podcast and a lot on just social media and in Facebook in general. Wars uh, have yeah. So the Unicron Unicron situation is that uh, Haslab or has Haslab is Hasbro's uh, like collector centric crowdfunding platform has lab has a unicron figure that is enormous and they are yeah, looking for it's eight thousand it is 27 inches tall which if you're me at this moment then hello you sexy devil but i actually have a uh, a tape measure here and i've just measured out 27 inches because you know i have the power to do so and then i've sat it on my desk and then it doesn't I fit in the screen. no i have to go backwards <laughs> but even then like like you know, I mean, for people that are listening, you won't be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm holding what 27 inches look like. And it's, this is every fisherman's dream. Like when your this hands is, are this, this, apart, is, it, it, this is a post-watershed <laughs> podcast. It's okay. <laughs> Ash is holding 27 inches in his hands, everyone. <laughs> this is every fisherman's dream. And you're like, it was this You won't big. believe what happens next. I swear it was this big, but this is like, I'm, I'm not a, t I'm not a short dude, but I'm like holding this and it's like up to my hip. Yeah, yeah, no. It, he's I size knew it was of, big, but he's like the size of a small child. Unicron, yeah, Unicron has basically always been a petulant small child. So, like, I why not? He's the size of a large child. He's massive. <laughs> it's it's obscene. But you know, the interesting thing is obviously it's on EB Games website. Technically, it's being one of those things that's going to be distributed via Zing. Uh, we have a release date that let's says let, well, no, 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 no. Let's let let's talk about this right because. Hasla Hasbro was trying to crowdfund eight thousand people to yes. support this. Now yes. they are they are straight up not going to make it. They're at like twenty six hundred, and there's three weeks to go. We're we're halfway through. They're not going to. I do think it. anyone who is anyone understands that because it's exclusively available to people in the US, you are looking at subsets that go from you need eight thousand people that a give a shit about Transformers. B, have enough expendable income to look at something that costs that much and say, yeah, I'll do it. And then C, want a unicron in their life. So, I mean, it's sort of like it drills down. D, D, 
D, have a wing of their house available to hold it. <laughs> yeah, have a private wing available to house this monstrosity. Because the thing is, even though it's 27 inches tall with the wings, it's so wide. But um, yeah, 8,000. So I think that's why we're starting to see it crop up. Like, have you noticed it's not just me either? It's starting to crop up on all of the like, different websites where you can order it. With people talking about, we have pre-order opportunities. So, so, so that's right. Like, um, mm. the, so Hasbro's faced a lot of criticism from... I don't know what just happened, but... Oh, eh? <laughs> I think one of my lights, its battery just died. <laughs> so you're slightly less illuminated. I, I'm slightly... I'm, I'm a little bit more in the dark than I was a few minutes ago. He's a bit dimmer than he was before, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. my, yeah, my so, dimmer switch has been left on. So Regarding yeah. this, I think it's reaching a point now that, you know, Hasbro, Takara, HasLab, as they call it, I think they're starting to sort of slowly open the gates because the biggest thing is people saying, could this possibly happen just in the Americas? No, it can't. There's the, 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 the answer is straight up no. People it's have not. been harassing people have been harassing Hasbro since day one. Uh, give me the opportunity to buy this. I'm overseas, and Hasbro has just gone. Ah, oh, if it gets funded, we'll look at ways of making it available internationally. Now, mm. I think what's happened in the background is Hasbro has just gone. Holy shit, this isn't going to get funded. Mm. How do we make sure that we can actually have eight thousand people? Just not opening it up to the eastern nations like Japan, <laughs> like. Also, oh, they did open it up to Japan because they they listed it on Takara Tomy Mall, and that was the first non-US place that it was listed. Correct. Now, once it made it through to Takara Tomy Mall, it started appearing in lots of other places as well. However, mm-hmm. they started appearing with a premium attached, and uh, yeah. for the while well, the original price is five hundred and seventy-five US dollars, places like Big Bad, Big Bad Toy Store and TF Source mm-hmm. started listing it for eight hundred US dollars. Now, there was a there was a good reason for this as well. Those companies were taking on the financial burden of actually having to pay $575 at the end of August, but not charging you for it. Uh, you could you could pay it off and you could uh, handle it. You could pay it for it when it shipped in 2021. Now, what is happening here, at least in EB Games' case, because I've actually spoken to EB Games about this, if you pre-order it off the EB Games website, which I have, you, you have. pay I have. I've I've submitted a pre-order. Uh, you pay you pay one hundred dollars. Okay. That's your, that's your pre-order price. You pay the rest when the figure is released, if it's released, and if it doesn't get <sighs> done, if it doesn't happen. You get your hundred dollars back. It's just more that that that's the stinger. See, I've had other things similar in EB Games where I'm like, you know, here's this collector's edition that's price hasn't been announced yet. For a hundred dollars, you can have the deposit, and then it hits, and it's like nine hundred bucks. No, no, and- no, 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 no. Look directly at the thing that's on screen. Oh, that yeah, is a pro- that, no, no, but that's a price. It's eight hundred forty-eight dollars. I've I know, agreed. The fact that I can't, like, I can't do the 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 usual EB Games equivalent of I just want to pay off twenty dollars every other week if I could, please, just lay by, lay by yeah, for so a. <laughs> that's so that's an interesting question. Someone in someone in the discussion group did actually say today, "Can I go in and pay it off?" I don't know. Entirely. But yeah, I would say I would I would say if you go into your if you go into your local store and talk to the manager and just see what they see what they'll offer you, they probably will let you yeah. because there is a price. Now, the the other interesting thing about this is this is actually the cheapest way on the planet to get mm. this figure outside of uh, outside of being in America and getting it from Haslab. Out, outside so, of actually sneaking into Hasbro headquarters and just stealing it. Th- this too, but Even that then, that eight hundred forty eight dollars. Yes. Uh, well, I will in prison time. The eight hundred and forty-eight dollars. Well, the more that we talk about this, and the fact that you've pre-ordered, now I'm sitting here going, oh, "Why haven't you pre-ordered it, Ash? You've got a room." Well, it's more like just yeah, I have a room. You've got. Like, you've got you, don't you also have a high table that you're a high chair that you're probably not going to be using in a year's time? You were going to ask if I'm going to put this in one of the baby carriers and see if I can why, put it on my and carry it around. Can you put Unicron in a papoose? <laughs> Possibly, but yeah, I mean, for eight hundred and forty-eight dollars, it does. Like, I, 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 I just want to make want to make special mention here. Of the, like I'm saying, this is the cheapest pre-order outside of Hasbro, because eight hundred and forty-eight Australian dollars is literally five hundred and seventy-five US dollars converted to Australian. That's but it. I mean, there's no, there's no markup. There's no way. This is definitely not a. This is not a placeholder price. They've said we are stuck on this. It will not change. They're not just going to go mm, shipping error. Mm, it's going to actually be fifteen hundred. No, it's a, it, like it when you submit the order, it says your order is eight hundred forty eight dollars. So look, a lot can happen between here and the here in twenty twenty one, right? The Aussie Surely dollar might crash. We don't know. One. 
Interesting. We, we don't know. There, there might be some. There might be something going wrong with that. But right mm. now, if this was to go through and get 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 funded and uh, nothing untoward happened, eight hundred and forty eight dollars. So in effect, in a year's time, seven hundred and forty eight dollars. In fact, because you've already paid off the hundred dollar deposit. Very good point. Yeah. Interesting. So start saving now. Put the hundred bucks down. And see what happens. Like, Stop so to make them justify it. Like, I'm looking at this from the from the perspective of if I was buying a third party combiner, I'm paying a hundred dollars a limb. There's four limbs. I'm possibly paying more for the chest. So I'm already up to like five hundred and fifty dollars. That's mm -hmm. not twenty seven inches tall. It probably does not have uh, fifty points of articulation. It probably Can't doesn't turn Megatron into Galvatron. Now. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't even turn into a planet. This is a dangerous conversation. So. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. There's a lot of can hmm. can can I, can I make the conversation slightly more dangerous? It depends. Is the next topic going to be? And if you do it in the next ten minutes, it's only going to cost you seven hundred dollars. No, but what I am going to do? Good. Oh yes, excellent. I'm going to th th throw yes. to I'm going to throw to one of my favourite stories this week, which is the fact that we've actually seen someone physically transform it, but it's not your average transformation video. This is the classiest transformation video I've ever seen. This is the best thing. Because this guy, this guy actually works for Takara Tomy. He's worked for them since 1986. He's been there for a long, long time. Yeah. But also, can we just talk about how cool he is transforming <laughs> the prototype of Unicron while wearing a tuxedo and sunglasses? Yeah. I mean, like, he clearly can't see what he's doing. No. So, obviously, for the listeners at home, what we're watching is a very dapper gentleman. He's wearing sunglasses inside. He's wearing a tuxedo with a little bow tie. And he's in sapia tone, all right? It's not full color. He's in sapia tone, probably because Unicrons are just a test shot. But it's him physically transforming this massive, massive dude. He puts together a stand, he sits the planet on it, and then he starts the conversion from planet to the destroyer. I think it's also and worth pointing out that Unicron even transforms the way he did in the cartoon. Yeah, the fact that the video is interspersed with clips from the movie of him transforming. And so when you see the massive section of his elbow come out and his hand twists and it emerges, the dude's physically doing that on the figure. Like, yeah. it's not just a dude who turns from a ball into a humanoid planet-eating robot. It's a dude who turns from a, a, a planet into a planetoid-eating robot the same way he did in the cartoon. It's great. And for the people listening at home, that's me clapping my hands. That's that's what that sound is. It is, a, it is utterly amazing. And, 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 and we're, done. we're done. Oh, and he forgot Unicron has to have his horns up. But yeah, that's I love that we find out that he actually has articulation in his horns. So technically, you can angle them down into like you know a heavy metal cover, and then you can angle them up into a slightly different heavy metal cover. <laughs> Now, there's one other thing that I would like to call attention to out of this video, which is, have you ever seen a cooler photo than that? What, just a man casually <laughs> sipping a cup of tea next to... No, 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 no. A, man in a, a man in a tuxedo sipping a cup of tea next to a prototype of Unicron. But Unicron's mid-pimp swagger, like literally one foot forward, one hand raised, he's like, he's mid-strut. Unicron wants that tea. I mean, mm. Unicron eats everything in his path, so why would he not want the tea as well? At one point, I considered sparing your pathetic teapot, but now you will witness its dismemberment. Indeed, you shall. So, Ash, you're going to put a pre-order in? I don't want to say no, but I'm. Let's be honest. I'm pretty. Sure <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to say no, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me check. Is my wife within earshot? I might be able to get away with it. But um, yeah, if it's coming out in 2021, I mean, it, it, you mentioned that the payment obviously comes as a lump sum once it's confirmed. That's when it hits its crowdfunding goal? Uh, no, actually. So the so the payment is... So you actually don't have to pay the rest. I'll just get rid of the cat. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to pay the rest. Now he's in. Now he's annoyed. Uh, you don't have to pay the rest until it's ready to ship. Really? So I could have even longer than like the crowdfunding goal. All right. Well, yeah, I'm about to say, if it's 2021, I have more than 12 months to start putting some cash away. Yeah. So, so it, we've just had a tax return end. I have another tax return between before then. So here's the thing, right? Hmm. This this is not a crowdfund support. This is a pre-order. 
And so it's a deposit on the pre-order and you pay the balance when the pre-order is done, right? Mm. So there it does is come to have it saying that it's not yet in there and it, you know, if it does not get clear for production, you will receive a full refund. So it's not even a gamble. No, it's not. No, not at all. Now, I know there, were, there were some websites that said, there's a non-refundable deposit. And I was like, can you not? Um, as, look, I, I, bit, honestly, as far as Unicron goes, I haven't seen any website say that it's a non-refundable deposit. I have seen, I think it was either Big Bad Toy Store or TF Source, their, mm-hmm. default, their default thing when you say, hey, pre-order and put it down, the default says pre-orders are non-refundable, but it did say in the body of the description, you will get a refund if it doesn't go. Uh, okay, good. So like, like, I noticed. Yeah, they, they, have been, they have been right. playing fair. Now the the other thing is to the question of whether or not this pre order counts as a uh, as a backing for the crowdfund, it does. So ah, good. So if you pre order from EB Games, then that mm. is one more towards Hasbro's eight thousand crowdfund goal. Now, obviously, it's a little bit different because they're taking a pre order via Hasbro rather than taking the crowdfund mm. via Haslab. Now, what's going to happen is. Uh, if you, if you pre-order and then duck over to the HasLab website, your pre-order will not affect the total that is shown uh, on that website. Okay. And EB Games tells me that they will not even tell Hasbro how many pre-orders they've got until the end of the month. So, huh. on so August what we need to do is wait to see if there's like a massive jump courtesy of EB Games. I mean, I'd assume that this is also, would it be in GameStop stores in the US or no? No, I don't believe it is. I think this is purely an international thing. Hmm, uh, okay. like, we, are see- we are seeing this crop up on all the international uh, websites. All of the American websites seem to put a premium on it, which uh, mm-hmm. I think means that they're just going to fund the crowd, you know, fund the crowd yep. fund for you. Uh, but all of the international websites seem to be taking pre-order deposits, which they're doing through Hasbro. Mm-hmm. So EB Games is in contact with Hasbro, and this yep. was done in consultation with Hasbro Australia. So it's okay. an official. It's an official thing. Now, what I think also mean, this also means is going to happen is that, you know, like let's let's say that the crowdfund gets to three, three and a half thousand, right? We won't know how many pre-orders they've taken from international retailers. They're not going to they're not going to they're not going to notch up the the number of pre-orders on the Haslab website. All that's going to happen is at the end of August, they're going to turn around and say we're going to make it or we're not, and so. Oh. They might not. They 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 might not make it to eight thousand on the crowdfund, but they might go. You know what? We've opened up international pre-orders, and mm-hmm. you know we got we got to whatever we got to, and there's enough demand that we're going to make it. Like they might get to six thousand. Who knows? Well, that's the interesting thing that people need to be aware of here. Like, obviously, it's a crowdfund thing, but this this isn't Hasbro and Takara using something like Kickstarter with defined rules that if you don't make it, you don't make it. This is their platform. Okay, they've made the rules so far. They have the ability to change them should they do. If they get seven thousand nine hundred backers, there's nothing stopping them from going. Eh, close enough, fine. Yeah, we'll do it anyway. if they get if they get four thousand, they go. Yeah, we can do it, but it's going to be a limited run. Eh, there's nothing stopping them. It's their platform, their rules. So no doom and gloom for me. I reckon we're going to see Unicron in some way, at some point. Either way, well, on the podcast when it happens. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of chatter going around saying that Hasbro is probably going to do it anyway. Um, Soon after they started the crowdfund, there were there were a lot of interviews and there were um, other other discussions and, and like that came out saying that they've already been working on it for eighteen months. Marketing at San Diego Comic Con this year, showing oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's not was, this is just, this isn't the from them. This is something they're pushing. There's something they're going. This is something we aim to do. If you want us to do it, come on, just give us a sign. We'd like eight thousand signs, but we'll take less if that's all we're going to get. It's fine. We like money. Look, it's it's it'd be pretty embarrassing for them having gone out so hard for the last month or so if it didn't make eight thousand. Just imagine if it was just like, yep, and we're not making it. And to all the third party yeah, that's people, it, that's there, it. have fun with your unicorns. Yeah. I mean look that so if they don't make this, they've shown a transformation video and all the third parties are gonna be like, show us how does it <laughs> no, work. No, 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 no. That in like the, the pro- trade, pro- trade. Trade. No, wait, wait. can we download the high def version of this video? <laughs> <laughs> can we can we get the tailor of the guy that made the suit? Yeah. Um, we know the label on the suit. The, then the prototypes that exist currently would suddenly be worth absolutely skyrocketed amounts. There do seem to be quite a few prototypes out as well. They're out there. They had several at Comic Con. Like yeah. there was like you know it's it's like any other product from like Hasbro Takara. When it's displayed, there's one in its alt mode, 
and this one not in its alt mode. So and there's at least it. always two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and look, there's the prototypes there. There's the photographs that we've got here showing you know, actual color on it as well. Um, yeah, there's there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of prototypes out there as well. But yeah, no, if they don't make it, the third parties are going to just go to town and have a field. Rank. Yep. Even if they do make it, who knows? Um, look, the one thing that I the one thing that I will say about uh, the decision to make it or not make it is that well, Hasbro can play a bit fast and loose with the truth. So if Hasbro says they've made uh, they've made eight thousand pre-orders, uh, maybe they maybe they have, maybe they haven't. They might just say that they've made enough, and that enough might not be eight thousand. They might they might redefine what enough is, but. I'm pretty confident at this point taking international pre-orders, it's going to be enough. Yeah, we'll see. As the Cron Wars continue. Indeed. Let's take a moment to appreciate that last photo there. Yes. And, uh, Dapper transformations. That's what I want to see more of. Dap formations? Yes. Yes. Uh, let's move on. Um, we are getting a, getting a bunch of new... Uh, Bunch of new siege figures, yeah, up, including this dude. So um, we are looking at a repaint of Hound. He is blue and red with some yellow highlights, which makes him hot shot. He's hoot shoot, yeah. Yes, hoot shoot, hoot um, shoot, hoot, hoot shoot is a is a, a, a siege repaint of Hound in some really bright primary colors. And I got to say, I really quite like it. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't get the yellow crotch, but I just I don't need to get it i guess but i love the head sculpt i really love this really techy head and i mean when was the last time we like saw a modern hot shot i think the last time we saw a modern hot shot was when hot shot was in a cartoon i mean was that when it was you know amada back in the day like i thought it was either energon or cybertron probably probably either but i mean it's been a long while especially been a long while for a toy and i'll be clear I love the hound mold. Go for it. Use it for as many people as you want. I love it. It's such a great transformation. It does that cool leg flippy thing that I love to pieces. I would have liked some I would have liked to see some unique gun sculpts for him, but I'm not gonna argue. It's fine. He's got good guns, they're fun. That's fair. Um the one thing the thing I think is quite interesting is taking a look at his uh taking a look at his alt mode. So that like they've so in fact I've got hound got hand in the breach as it was there you go I, I, I do um so yeah so they haven't really they haven't really remolded very much on him but they've they've used a few interesting um a, a few interesting places to draw attention on the paint highlights mm. so yeah like i'm i'm i mean i'm i'm pretty happy with that and i mean it's just sometimes you're like a baby blue autobot yeah, why not? Especially, I mean, especially Hotshot. So Hotshot mm. was, of course, uh, developed, or the character was developed in, uh, I should look at this camera. The uh, character was developed in um, Armada, Anagon, Unic uh, mm. Cybertron, the, the Unicron Wars trilogy. And yep. he was, was meant to be a replacement for Bumblebee because uh, they, they wanted to give Bumblebee a rest. Mm -hmm. here, here we are in 2019 and they can't get enough Bumblebee in front of anyone. Yep. <laughs> no rest for the Bumble Wicked. No rest for the bee, but uh, Bumblebee's uh, Bumblebee's reascendance. I think since the two thousand and seven movie, like Bumblebee's been one of the most popular characters. So, with Bumblebee's uh, reemergence into uh, into into the it's pretty the easy to check, Jason. Just hands up every Transformer they got a solo film. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, but uh, with Bumblebee becoming more popular, it means Hot Shot has been pushed a little bit further back into the background. And uh, you know, as you were just saying, it's been a while since we've had a. It's been a while since we've had a, a figure of the character, and I'm cool with seeing it here in Siege because why not? Again, it's a cool, it's a cool mold, and eh, just repaints, repaints don't hurt anyone. No, but like Siege has got a couple of good repaints uh, going in it so far. So, um, spoiler, as I uh, said a couple of weeks ago, and I um, let me let me just spoiler alert. Bring myself up here. Now. So, like uh, when I I said a couple of weeks ago uh, when I. I picked up Red Alert that I wanted to still wanted to get a side swipe, and uh, so I did. Because <laughs> why not? Were they both there at the same time? And you thought, why not? No, no, no. I had to. I had to order side swipe off Amazon. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that during. Um, still all over Tazzy. Don't tell me that. <laughs> I got free shipping, so it's okay. Nah, yeah, it doesn't matter then. So yeah, um, not sure what wave Hotshot is in. Um, yeah. 
I think we'll be waiting a little while. I, I reckon we're sort of, I, I, you know, as the siege carousel sort of goes around, once you start to see familiar faces again, that sort of means you've sort of reached the end of it. And we all know that siege itself, the war for Cybertron Rangers is working just like the previous ones did in the sense that sort of it's going to be several versions. We're going to have war for Cybertron siege and then we'll get snarg and then we'll get snuffles or something. I reckon this will be coming. It, it is a trilogy. Siege. Yeah, at the at the finger quote end of siege. Yeah, who knows? Maybe he'll come out alongside Omega Supreme. Maybe uh, Supreme is due sometime in the next couple of months. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, closer, much closer to Christmas. Takara has released some pictures of this dude, MP forty eight yeah. Leo Convoy. There's some new stock images have uh, have come out this week. Um, I don't know why I chose this photo. It does look a little bit goofy, but uh, if you are at all familiar with uh, if you are at all familiar with Leo Convoy, um, the pictures will not be much of a surprise to you. However, the loading time on my laptop will be. It's taking a while to change photos. It's not just your laptop. It's actually the photos are massive, just in case you weren't aware. I was having <laughs> them earlier. Every photo is like something like eight megapixels. They just they haven't shrunk them down. But I mean, for those who don't know, if you've enjoyed the old Beast Wars argument of truck, not monkey, then let's get on board with <laughs> truck, not lion or monkey. So... You know, this is the more Japanese-themed Transformers uh, Beast Wars thing. But it's like I said back when I was on the podcast when it was first shown off. God, this came out of nowhere. And, I mean, the test shot that really, they showed yes. off, it looked good, but it was still obviously a test shot, very rough paint. And a lot of it was obviously very clearly painted plastic. These pictures are showing proper molded, colored plastic. And it's That's really right. clean, very clean looking, dude. Are these pictures actually showing a model or are they showing a CG render? I don't think it's CG, if only because sometimes CG, they don't show screws that well. Yeah, that's true. I could yeah. be wrong. Yeah, it just it's it's always been a thing for me that instead of screws, they sort of show like these little sort of, I, I don't know, they're like little dark donuts that are supposed to represent screws. But I don't know. This guy, from the way that he's posed, like there's a couple of things that look a bit human imperfections. Like you're looking at some of his poses where like, even like when he's sort of doing this big chest burst thing, you can tell there's a bit of digital manipulation there. But like, if you look at his elbow joints, like if it's done on a computer, they're very, they're usually very like perfectly angular, but you can see that he's actually got a double joint in his elbow and you can tell that's kind of like a humor sort of going, good enough. I could be wrong, wrong, but you know, I'll be honest, they've started to fool me with some of their mock-ups because just the CGI models they show off are so good, it's hard to tell when they actually are taking photos of actual models. Look, look I, I mean, I do I do, uh, you know, mobile phone reviews and stuff, and the, the, the quality of CG renders these days is astonishing. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, the other yeah, thing that uh, I think it is actually pictures is that there is another picture of him standing next to the other MP, Optimus Primal which is that's something that has me thinking that either they did pull over the actual model for it and then they've done a CG of both of them or they're just going, well, here's him next to an actual figure. So, you know, yeah, could be, might not be, who knows? Either way, looks clean, looks colourful. Definitely looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. Sure does, doesn't it? Uh, now, as with all of our favourite Transformers at the moment, he's on pre-order at AB Games. Now, this is something I wanted to address, is that I have good friends who work higher up in EB Games, and they're very aware that in the past I've griped to them that there's not a lot of pre-orders or even just Transformers sold in the stores. During Titans Returns, they just had random deluxe figures. They sold Blur. They sold Cup. Just out of nowhere, they, just, they had these. And I was like, are you going to get anything else? And I'm like, we just get what we're given. But nowadays, there's actually quite a few things showing up. Obviously, mp 48s now here, available for pre-order. Lovely price, two hundred ninety-eight dollars. I mean, fair enough. That's what's happening. Oh, but even you, you saw him compared to Optimus Primal. Correct. He's he's a big boy. But big boy. even like the new smoke screen, uh, not new smoke screen. Sorry, new um. Yeah, the smoke street. screen plus. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, smoke screen plus became available to pre-order on the EB Games website. So I mean, they had like a routine release of like movie-based masterpieces. But we're starting to see just regular masterpieces appear in the Zing store. So I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what's happening, right? Um, Toys R Us is gone. Yes. Yeah. Toys R Us was the place that uh, Hasbro Jason, is Jason, they're coming back. 
Well, we can talk about that if you want, but I, I think we already have. No, um, but either way, there is obviously the supply and demand. If people are understanding how it works, obviously there was a supply that went away. It means that there's a demand. And to be honest, if you've been into a Zing, you know they have very particular brand of stuff. And the idea of sort of premium level transformers isn't very far away from what they already sell. No, very true. Very yeah. true. Um, but I, I think also the, the fact is that EB is working closer with Hasbro Australia, which is probably mm. a position that they weren't in when Toys R Us was around. Yes. Now, the one thing I want to share, the best, one of the favorite things I see about, obviously, it appears on the uh, EB Games website. Um, if you scroll down for the people reading at home, Jason, the thing that comes up directly underneath these pictures is obviously the big, bold heading of, Behold, the quintessential devil in these matters. <laughs> it's such an out there sort of Japanese cartoon thing to say, which is cool. Um, beyond that, it obviously has the, the contents of what's coming with these guys. And uh, for him, you get one Leo convoy body, one Cybertron Buster, the Le two Leo Beams, four Leo Missile, and then one Holder Parts. Now, you tell me, do you think Holder Parts means we're going to get a, a display stand? I think so. Uh, yeah. There's nine images. Maybe there's maybe one of the images has uh, something interesting in it. So, I mean, that's the thing. I'm, I'm drawn to either Holder Parts either is going to be some kind of display stand for him doing stuff, or perhaps it, it's actually coming with, like, some kind of little thing to hold the accessories, which I'd like. That would be cool, because obviously as figures start to have more and more accessories, which Hasbro, if you're listening, Takara, keep doing it. More stuff. I like accessories. It just becomes a pain storing them. That's why I liked it when uh, MP Ironhide came out, his little sled accessory. You could fit pretty much all of his weapons into it. It, like it, it, it is nice when you can when you can attach everything to a figure, isn't it? Yes. I mean, <laughs> when you get an ultimate gun mode or ultimate battle mode, fair enough. But when you want to put them away, it's nice not to have them, you know, chucked in a drawer. This is true. Hmm. Uh, look, I, I, look, there's a lot of resealable bags in my future, but yeah. <laughs> Tupperware, Tupperware kids, that's what you get at the local supermarket. Don't put food in it. Just put your plastic crack in it. Well, uh, you know, we'll crack in it. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, Ash, how's your, how's your BotBots con collection going? I'll be honest. I have a five-pack that I have not opened because it was marked down at a local target because somebody had tampered with the packaging but had taken nothing out of it. Oh. oh that's and I put it away. It's literally my in-case-of-bad-day break glass scenario. In case I have a bad day, I have a suite of BotBots to jump into. Fair enough. There mm. is, a, there is in fact, a sweet amount of new BotBots coming. <laughs> there's, uh, there we go. There's seven, seven BotBots per row. No, there's eight. Oh, God. It's like... <laughs> some of their names. Some of the, yeah, no, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother reading some of these, but, um, no. yeah, no, there's like, there's something like 60 or 60 or more BotBots coming yep. in series three. Now, I think it's safe to say that BotBots have been, pretty successful uh the community seems to have and seems to have embraced them Definitely people enjoy them way, yeah. they're, they're cute and they're fun but they're like these inoffensive little things that are a few dollars for you to play with and they're yeah. and they transform so like absolutely I yeah do. at this point if bot bots are a failure then hasbro is doubling down on this failure and just going you will like them eventually Have you will love them. Them. and yeah. like even it's one of the few things where like some of the bot bots that are literally just recolors because of the way they recolor it. I don't care. You we've seen Steve from accounting the way they recolored him is he has slightly different colors, but he gets a completely different face and therefore a completely different personality. And that means I love him. It's true. The, the bot bot faces are quite distinctive, aren't they? Yes. They're, they're incredible. And just ugh, the names, like there has to be like a think tank of people at Hasbro headquarters locked in a room hopped up on Red Bull and all kinds of other ridiculous energy things, and they're just cranking out pun after pun after pun. Can we go back? This, this guy is Sweet Cheat. Sweet Cheat. This guy, <laughs> this, this guy is Tangry Tars. I just want to share that there is what appears to be a Mandarin called Tri Sour Tops. Yeah. It turns into a little dinosaur. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Yeah. Um, oh. This one is called this one is called wristband, as in band for life. Yeah, wristband, and what he he's a digital watch. He's a watch. Avocado. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, they look, look, they're great. I'm not, I'm not going to go through too many of them. Too many more of them. Wait, sorry, um, is it a bonsai plant that turns into a dragon that's called Smurg the Sad? Smurg the Sad, yes. It is. I've just seen his actual model shot. So instead of Smaug, it's Smurg yeah, the Sad. Smug. A bonsai and he's tree dragon. If you were Smaug, wouldn't you be sad about now? Mm, right about meow. So, yeah. Uh, um I think I pulled away from BotBots a little bit just because I know that if I start wanting to collect all of them, Hasbro needs to stop releasing them first because I might be doing it for the rest of my life. Collecting all of them is actually kind of annoying because there are some that only appear in like the, the five or the eight packs. Yep. Yeah. So basically just don't. Um, I have right. a, I, stick to a particular subset. Get the Goo Goo Groupies, for example. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could do those. Um, I haven't, uh, I haven't added to my BotBots collection in a while. The last ones that I got were the uh, the sneaker and the coffee machine. Um, oh, really? The coffee machine has the uh, amazing distinction of transforming into a dinosaur, and his name is Javasaurus Rex. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <That's great. laughs> love it, loving it. All right, that's it. That's just it. Why wouldn't you US love this? Life. No, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> so yeah, uh, new botbots are coming. Series Series One eventually came here. Series Two is yep. currently all over the place here. So we assume Series Three comes shortly. Uh, mm -hmm. If you are if you are in the stores, uh, Series One is red. Series Two is green. Series Three is a light poo poo brown. Delightful. I thought they might have gone for a brighter color. But they I've didn't seen the brown ones yet, but now you've said that, I'll be keeping an eye out. If only so I don't step in it. Yes, no, I haven't seen them here yet, but uh, they can't be too far away. We are getting our first look at some uh, some figures that were uh, discussed last show, which I yeah, think was that's fun. right. You thought we were Catholic done talking about Transformers Siege. We are not done talking about Transformers Siege. There's always more. So Siege, Siege has got a separate adjunct that has this 35th anniversary box branding. So yeah. um, they're, they're not doing the character art on the side of the box, but they are instead sort right. of doing a big, bright, big, bright red theme with 35 on it. They uh, are still the fancy Siege boxes, though. The cool shapes there, just completely different are. branding. Yeah. And uh, so some of the coolest things that I've actually seen Hasbro announce in all of Transformers them, and they announced a Unicron a few weeks ago, is mm. these two figures. Uh, there is an Optimus Prime and Megatron with the distinction of them actually having a cel-shaded paint job. Yeah, they them. are and painted they to appear great. like they did in the original cartoons. If you've seen some of the incredible like masterpiece artworks that have been done online with people doing those cel-shaded looks, it's fantastic. And obviously, the Siege range has, you know, sort of the, the dings and the scratches, the battle damage. It has more paint apps than you'd usually expect, even if they are a bit wobbly. But these are nuts. These are legit figures painted to look like they did in the cartoon. And, I mean, the thing I love about them is that they're based off great molds, so they're just... I, these are the first figures I've seen where I'd like to buy them and display them in box. I, I'm happy to get these out of the box. Uh, these are this is a couple of figures. They are coming out. They are supposed to be coming out now, although I've had one retailer tell me that they've been pushed back to October. Um, oh, really? But the their wave mates are apparently making it out in Malaysia at the moment. So yeah. it's not, not just these two so, in the wave, but these two are the most... Uh, some not just most primes and megs, but we're also going to be getting another Voyager in the look of a good old-fashioned sound blaster for those who love to get your sound wave in the dulcet tones of black and red, which I have to say his chest window, electrifying in red. It's incredible. And then also at a left field, not a Voyager, but we're actually getting a, uh, a figure of Blue Streak. With his, uh, his silver colors. Looking yeah. Just um, the re release of the MP figure. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I think it's no, it's no coincidence that there's a Blue Streak MP and a Blue Streak Deluxe coming out. But uh, <laughs> I, I think it's interesting when you look at the size of the figure inside the box. Like, they've put him in the it's Voyager just, size box. Very clearly in the Voyager box. So you've got the big boy, big boy, big boy. And then, I'm a big kid now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so not notably with these guys, uh, with Blue Streak and with Sound Blaster, they're not mm. cell shaded. It's the it's the no. Prime, Prime and Megatron are the uh, animation shaded ones. They are they are the two redecos. Not they are, they are, they are the two that I will be uh, I'll be seeking out from the from this rebrand. I wave. do not have a Sound Wave, and I actually kind of like black on Sound Blaster. So I mean, 
I was going to pick up Soundwave, but now I think I might source this instead just to be a little bit different. Yeah. And uh, I do not have the Siege Prowl mode as it was, and I quite like a bit of Silver Streak action in my life, so I might end up getting every single one of these ones. <laughs> I know. Uh, my wallet is elsewhere weeping. It's fine. Yeah, no, the wallet's in the next room. Um, mm. So, yeah, uh, so yeah, these guys are, these guys are coming out now slash in the next couple of months. Um, so keep an eye out for them. They're very unlikely to come down under, so you might have to grab them from an importer. Oh, yeah, I will definitely be looking online. I'm hoping that somewhere will have some kind of buy the whole set for the price of the whole set deal for me. That seems very likely. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Studio Series has done well for itself in the last uh, 12 months. Is it 12 mm. months? Or is it 12 it's months or two years it's been out? It, it, I think it's been about two years because it came yeah. towards the end of one of the, the, the Bay movie sort of uh, spiel going on. But, I mean, Studio Series has seen quite a lot of uh, really interesting success in the sense that, obviously, it sort of came out really hard pushing the movie aesthetic. And then it started to do a little bit more sort of, I guess, experimental figures with sort of lesser known characters. And, you know, some people weren't even characters in the films at all. That's and uh, right when the Studio Series news had sort of it, it, it had kind of petered out, people were like, yeah. There's going to be Bumblebee movie figures and there's going to be a Devastator. What else? This news hit. And now we have this incredible array of we've got another 2007 Camaro Bumblebee, which is like a really good looking, really clean looking figure. Um, we've got the female bots from what Revenge of the Fallen, where you had sort of like the triplets, the three bikes that were like RC and chrome i mean they're calling it rc chrome in leader one but from the film they were just called the triplets they were called rc collectively uh yeah. we have a dark the move sound wave who looks absolutely just rad that's the only word i can call him he's rad and he turns into a sweet looking merc he's a mercedes right i'm pretty sure he, he de he's definitely a mercedes like he has that merc logo front yeah, and center. that's right and yeah. he comes with comes with laser beak not not quite you know photocopy of laser beak and then Yep. Just in case you missed uh, World War II Deco Bumblebee, you can now get yourself a World War II Deco Hot Rod, which everyone prays is better than the Bumblebee because the Bumblebee was a shell former. You know what the problem it with that is? Shell. It looks the same. It's the same figure. It's exactly the same mole. It's exactly the same. How do they lie to me? Like the bot mode looks okay and you see some engineering in the legs and I'm like, maybe it's different, but that's just me being a sucker for consumer stuff. And the cool thing is that they've actually released not just renders, they've actually got pictures, I think from, uh, was it, were they showing at Comic-Con? Either way, there's photos of the actual figures that are out. So you can actually see them in the finger quote flesh. It's there plastic. That's hmm. a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit different to the uh, the the render that we saw for Bumblebee. There. I think these don't have completed paint. Uh, if only because, like, I mean, I'm someone who actually buys Studio Series figures and I paint the parts that should be painted. These ones look less painted than normal Studio Series figures, which already like. Oliver Twist style. Please, sir, can I have some more paint? Can I have a little bit of paint? Just, just some more paint. Just some silver, please. <laughs> but these ones look like a little bit less painted. I think these might be test shots, but oh, God, I can see Hot Rod in that picture, and sure enough, he's got a giant crab shell on his back. Oh, I'm so upset all of a sudden. There's your triplets. Be happy. I just, I'm amazed that they even came out. Like, they each look like they might have a s interesting transformation. They, like, they do. They do actually look slightly different. Uh, Chromia, mm -hmm. the the blue one in the middle. Um, so RC's tires uh, both form. Correct. Uh, they it, both form her finger quote legs. Is Rolling. so. Just just answer me this: Is RC actually the lamp from the Pixar logo? <laughs> ging, 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 ging. How, how else does she move around? Well, that's the whole point, Jason. You see, in the film, for a brief second, she was on some wheels, and then she died. Hmm. Hello, number one RC fan. Maybe, here, she, maybe, she, maybe she died because she couldn't move. Maybe the animators just went, we can't work with this. I'll kill her in the next scene. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they yeah. Like, they do all look slightly different. You are, you are correct. Yeah, and the neato thing is that the, the girls actually come in a three-pack. Because they, they, they are yeah. one pack, so it'll probably be yeah. either Voyager or Leader Price. Yeah, I reckon that'd be safe. Hmm. 
But yeah, very interesting. And just a lot. It means that like when people thought that st- everyone thought that Studio Series was starting to peter off and possibly wrap up. Maybe we're going to get like a different version of Studio Series. We're going to get a Studio Series Devastator just, just to sign off on the wave. And we're going to finish with a couple of Bumblebee figures. And then we're going to get something else. And then this happens. It's like Hasbro Takara went, nah. We're going to start going back to 2007. And there's other stuff we haven't even done, like Soundwave. Like we haven't had a Studio Series Soundwave. Like, like uh, studio series has always hopped around the the films a lot, and like I think that's one of its strengths is that it sort of draws from the film universe rather than Correct. sort of moving chronologically through them. So I kind of expect that. Like we were all really excited when Soundwave finally appeared in um, Dark of the Moon, was it? Or yep, it was. A, he, yeah, he, he was. Yeah, he was a satellite in Revenge of the Fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ravage got more screen time, and then in um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, we were all pretty excited when Soundwave came out there. Um, Hot Rod is from the most recent the last night, uh, 2007. Wait, no, he was in Revenge of the Fallen. That's when he was a satellite. Dark of the Moon is when yes. he was a Merc. Sorry. I yes. just know that one person is going to comment and go, hey! And I'm like, I know. I was wrong, but I've corrected myself. Yeah, I know, but, that, but that's what I said. But, yeah. At this point, he's probably already going to have messaged me because he hasn't finished listening to the podcast yet. Hi, Corey. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, so anyway, um, World War II Bumblebee from the last night. Uh, sorry, Bumblebee, Hot Rod, whatever. Um, mm. It's the same figure anyway. Yep. So, someone, so, someone look, out there likes studio it. Series jumps, studio Series jumps around, and uh, one of the strengths of it is that you know it, it picks out some characters you might not otherwise expect. And so like, if you don't like one release, just wait for the next one. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know about you, I'm definitely getting that sound wave. I am not, but that's okay. You're allowed to. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. Unique Toys. Uh, Unique Toys has released some uh, color prototype photos of their last night Megatron. Uh, Megatron is one of the best uh, best figures of the last night, and the design mm-hmm. of the character in the last night was fantastic. So, uh, it is it is really good to see some uh, see some third party action on this figure, and of course. Unique Toys seems to make movie movie style figures that have uh, bizarrely good transformations and hide a lot of robot kibble. That jet mode looks quite clean, despite being clearly a transformer. But uh, look at look at look at what it turns into. It's so weird. Like I always want to know how they manage to do this because you've seen some of their Optimus Primes as well. Oh yeah. You see the alt mode next to the bot mode, and then in between is just black magic. Absolutely. But then you actually see it happen, and it's not that hard. They're not doing ridiculous, mind-bending, fingernail-ripping, you know, digit-destroying stuff. Once you start, you're like, oh, it makes sense. Turns yeah, inside no, out. Totally does. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the only reason that I am not at this moment covered in filth, walking on the main street, going, Dark Knight was terrible! The last night was also terrible! is because of the Megatron design. Pretty much, yeah. Um, it was an espe- it was just an especially strong, uh, strong robot mode, and it yeah, was no, clean, it was fantastic. It was interesting. It wasn't overly busy and silly. It was voiced by Frank Welker, and it was just cool. Like, I mean, it was Megatron with a big sword. He was grumpy. It was good. He still had an arm cannon. It was nice. I didn't even oh. care that he just mysteriously became Megatron again after being Galvatron. It was fine. I mean, like it wasn't fine, but it's okay. It doesn't keep you up at night at all. No. Hallmark has uh, Hallmark has released one Transformers <laughs> ornament, but you might want to buy two because there's also an Ecto one this year. And if you've purchased Ectotron, you can probably sneak a second Hallmark ornament into your uh, into your uh, Christmas assortment. So uh, there's it's a G1 Bumblebee for Hallmark this year, and yep. uh, yeah, he looks just like a G. He looks like the G1 reissue actually because he's got the uh, <laughs> he's got the cartoon face, but. Correct me. Does he actually transform? No, they're they <laughs> He's ones. just designed to look like he's in bot mode. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, uh, all the kids at Christmas. Exactly. They go. They go on the Christmas tree. That's all. Okay. So like, I'm that, all right. All just he, he's been deactivated. So these don't these don't come to Australia. Uh, if you want them, you're going to have to get them off eBay. They're not especially hard to get, but some of the older ones, like they have done a Prime, yeah. they've done a Star Scream, and I think Soundwave in the past. So, yeah. Yes, they have. WizKids has uh, is releasing paintable uh, paintable miniatures at five bucks a piece. Uh, so if you do want to, if you want to get your paint on and uh, try to try to um, 
figure out how G1 Transformers should look, uh, you can pick up these at your local WizKid dealer. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, WizKids has been popping up at a lot of hobby shops for me. The same kind of place where you'd go and pick up your Dungeons & Dragons miniatures, you'll probably find this kind of stuff. And yeah. the prices are reasonable. And I mean, like, obviously, the 3D renders always look a little bit better than the figures do, but the figures are so cheap. And because they're effectively modeling, uh, they're, they're modeling doovers. So it means that you can usually clean them up a bit, you know, whip out your hobby knife, get rid of some bad edges and clean them up. But I, yeah, I nice. you know, I already paint Transformer Transformers. I might as well just paint a model Transformer. And I mean, do we know how big they are? Because, I mean, miniatures, obviously, the key word there is miniature. So uh, are these, like, 32 mils? Are they... No, we don't large, know. Small, large? They're know. $5, so $5 US. I don't expect them to be very large. Like, I, I would say they're probably yeah. smaller than... Similar stuff for kids like for around that price is in the 32 mil range. So, you know, these guys are probably, you know, about the size of a roll of film, maybe. <laughs> Fair enough. If All you right. remember what that is, kids. No one knows what that is, Ash. Yeah, shut up, Grandpa. Fair enough. Three <laughs> A is shutting down, and they have a related company that everything is moving to called Three Zero. So, if you saw something from Three A that you wanted, then it's probably going to come from Three Zero. And honestly, I don't really know what the difference between the two of them is. They both go three and a letter after them. If a store called Three A is shutting down, but they say it's okay because our business will continue under Three Zero. What's actually happening? Is it a rebrand? So Whoa. according according to the wall of text that is on my screen, I'm going to read this off TFW. 3A was a joint collaboration between Ashley Wood, the artist, and Kim Fong Wong. They originally right. created toys based on the worlds and art of Ashley Wood. Kim eventually joined a sister company, th- created a sister company, 3.0, to manufacture non-Ashley products. They were running side by side for a while, but due to the ins and outs of the licensing deals over time, 3A also got into producing items that were not created by Ashley Wood, including including Transformers. Yawn, Ashley Wood has announced that 3A is shutting down, and so he's handing everything over to 3.0. Huh. Fairly straightforward. It's pretty yeah, straight. no, 3A has some interesting stuff. I mean, they did mostly statues, did they not? They do. They So 3, 3A are responsible for the... Um, Three A was I mean, are responsible for the Bumblebee. Uh, Bumblebee. Say, um, the thing I remember Pope recently was the big Blitzwing figure that they did. That yes. was three A, right? Yeah, and yeah, I mean, uh, it was. They are quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, my understanding is that it's essentially the same creative team behind it. It's just going to mm. have a different logo on it. Fair enough. I mean, that's happened to me before. Yeah. I got a cream. It cleared right up. <laughs> uh, and uh, that that is it as far as as far as news goes for the. Uh, for the week on that bombshell, we're going to come. We're going to come back for a. Uh, going to come back for a quick discussion. It's time to talk acquisitions. Ash, have you have you got anything new in the last few weeks? It's been a while since I we've have, had you on. I have indeed. In fact, I mean, I haven't been buying big. I haven't been buying extravagant. I actually had a friend of mine down here in the little island of Tasmania. Obviously, we sort of have the north and the south. For the north, if you go up the coast, you stop at a couple of cities and each of them have a Toy World or a Target or something, things like that. The beautiful thing about Toy World in Launceston is that it has current stuff. You go up the coast to Devonport, they have older stuff, and then you go to Bernie and they have ancient stuff. But a <laughs> mate of mine managed to pick up Wheelie from Titans Returns. Oh, my God. I, you know, so Wheelie, I, just, I actually just positioned my Wheelie on the shelf today. Yeah. And I... An I he literally sent me a picture of the shelf and I was like, is that wheelie? And he's like, yep. And I'm like, I'll take it. Because I heard a lot of really good things. People saying that uh, he had a really interesting uh, transformation and he does for a car body. Mm. He's actually quite nifty. A lot of cool stuff like the windshield chest flips up and around. His legs are really nifty. They completely fold out in the front of the car in a really different way than you usually expect from a car bot. And he's a nice little deluxe figure and I love him very, very much. Then something is slightly more modern. I actually picked up one of the uh, newer. I think these guys are what like Siege Wave three or something. But it's it's yeah, it's bright. It's a brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except uh, with the I guess I mean if you're watching, obviously my webcam has made him blue for some reason, even though he's usually. <laughs> <a delicious. laughs> I was but, wondering this. You lifted him up. <laughs> yeah, yes, I've I've modded him snort, but yeah, I mean I wasn't big on Cog. Just I I, I mean he was interesting, but like I I didn't I wasn't on board with parts based transformations yet. Like then I got six gun. I was like. Eh. 
when it's designed to be a parts former, you can't be mad about it. It's supposed to work that way. And then I got Brunt, and I love him. The way that he works is just groovy. He's big. He's thick. He obviously looks like a baddie from Beast Machines. I dig it. You might also notice that my Brunt has something a little extra on his shoulder. So, I mean, if you're familiar with Brunt, obviously he's mm, yeah. one of those explodey bits. But um, this actually comes courtesy of a good friend of mine who's actually doing some 3D resin printing. His company is called Empire 3D. I hope I got that right. And what he's actually doing at the moment is he's creating some additional parts for different figures that have been released over the last couple of waves. And I've actually got these because I'm cleaning them up and I'm going to paint them up for test shots. But, you know, we've got things like we've got Grimlock's sword because, you know, Grimlock in the last uh, release did come with a big, lovely sword. And for the Dinobots, slightly bigger, slappier swords as well. So I'm going to be painting up Brunty's gun. It's actually got a little joint on it. So He's got a bit of a hinge on it as well because Brunt's 5 mil peg hole is in the back, yeah. Correct. So it actually hinges on like that. And you can, obviously, when it's like this, it actually can be used as a regular gun in the hand. But, you know... He doesn't really have hands, kids. He's got giant meaty claws. But, um, yeah, I mean, he looks like a dude who should be covered in guns, so another gun's not going to hurt anybody. So I'm going to enjoy painting those up, and I'm going to enjoy posting pictures in the Transformers Collectors Club Australia Facebook. So, yeah, as far so, as new so, acquisitions, good times. So hmm? will, uh, will Empire be selling these online? At the moment, the thought is yes, provided that they keep coming out of the... You know, because like I said, it's actually a 3D resin print. You can see that's sort of a very standard Dinobot sword. Very clean, very nice. You know, the same with the big sword for Old Mate Grimlock. This is with minimal cleanup. They come out very nice. Each one is effectively handmade. Not super expensive to produce. And just lick a paint and off you go. So, yeah, yeah, he's exploring other options. It's one of those cool things about my favorite part of three, third party is when you're plugging holes in figures like, you know, this guy didn't come with a gun or this guy didn't come with a sword and nothing's been available. So, so not, so not literally plugging holes like the gap fillers. The but actually, of plugs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, but like, yeah. like actually just, uh, you know, like, um, yeah. You mean missing like the upgrade? Missing, it, missing it 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 yes. literally comes with filler for his parts. Yeah. No, no, cool. no like there's, there's an industry in fillers at the moment, and like I don't, I don't particularly agree with it, but yeah, it is what it is. You know, do you actually mean like when there's like hollow parts on a figure, there's yeah. like a part that slots in? Yeah, yeah. I've seen Someone the makes... upgrade kit for Ironhide. The part that interests me is that it comes with a slight hip upgrade just to give him a bit more width, which is cool. It doesn't affect his transformation, but then the rest of it is literally just you can shove this in his wrist, so they're not empty anymore and put this at the back of his legs and add a bit more detail i'm like why am i paying the same price i paid for the figure to upgrade it minimally but mm. you know not everything's for everyone but yeah hingy brunt gun is probably my favorite part and you know lick yeah, a paint, I, quite, I, quite, I quite like that yeah yeah i mean even if i hold it slightly close to the camera for the people that are watching it's got a really cool sort of sci-fi end to it. It's got side detail and like it comes hinged. Like it's it's a gun, it's a shoulder gun. Like it's everything I love about little fiddly transformer bits. You know, I, I just can't wait to paint this. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how to paint it yet. I kind of want to, because he has his little sort of stack on his back that's a bit sort of Galvatron orange. I kind of, I don't know whether I want to paint the front of this orange or whether I want it to be sort of purple and silver like his claws. Don't know. I reckon I'm going to stare at it intently and then just make a snap decision because that's how I work. That sounds like uh, that sounds like a good, cool, and normal way of doing things. Yeah, just procrastinate until you just have to get it done, and then just just pro procrast procrastinate until you can't procrastinate no more. Um, <laughs> I have. Uh, I know you've picked up stuff, and I want I to picked see up a couple of things. Picked up a couple of things uh, as a as I showed earlier in the show. Got myself a got myself a siege sideswipe. He is one of the goodest boys that I've seen in the range. Um, just I'm just surprised I haven't picked one up yet because again they're all over Tasmania. Yeah, yeah, that, that is weird. Um, especially given the figures, uh, given the figures' reputation as just being one of the best. Like he is a really nice, solid figure. He doesn't need any fillers in the back of his legs or anything like that. But um, yeah, no, really, really happy with him. Um, I did pick up a siege reflector, but he's. Um, Actually, out in the other room. <laughs> ah, you mean refractor? Uh, yes, I did. I picked up a uh, a a single refractor. Um, you didn't pick up his two I no, I didn't because I'm going to get the I'm going to get the three pack uh, with the G1 colors that were they announced ah, at SCCC. Um, 
And I've got a little box of stuff from Amazon, which is what uh, where Sideswipe came from as well. What's oh, wow. uh, got the missing MicroMasters? Um, is that Flack? Uh? Flack and Torchwood? No, uh, I can't see them. Uh, so, that, so there's Road Handler there. Um, road, road Handler. Road, road Handler is a particular particular favourite of mine. Like I, I, I was just really fond, really fond of his, uh, really fond of his uh, original G1 MicroMaster. So fond I've dropped it. Um, so so nice you yeeted him. Yes. Um, so uh, yes, there are the uh, oh, what? What are they? What are their names? I I I know these guys. I know these guys. G one incarnations better, but uh, yep, there we go. Where am I putting those? There we go. So what are you telling me? That's not Top Shot and Flack. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> Do they turn they're up the missile? Yes, yes, yeah. He's he's, 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 he's he's got he's got the missile launcher feet. Yes. Yeah. No, so they're I, very. I, I, don't, I don't know which one's which. <laughs> Um, and tangent, are you excited for the big mini uh, mini MicroMaster pack that they showed off at SDCC? It's already posted on its way to me from Hong Kong. There you go. Yes, I saw that. I was like, yes, I must have it. I'm <laughs> Tiny totally there for that. Plastic that want to break. Yeah, uh, oh, of course. The little Decepticon the- now planes as well. So these yes. guys, these guys combine into like a swordish a sword. kind of thing. It's a really dorky sword, but it's my favorite kind of sword. Dorky swords are the best kind of sword. That, yes. is, that is correct. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's that's my new acquisitions. When I get back from TF Nation, there will be a Ghostbuster Prime waiting for me. There will be a Generation Select Galactic Man waiting for me and a MicroMasters 10-pack. Excellent. Okay. Well, um, I want to be on the podcast when you take out your MicroMasters because they're just they're so nice. They are. Look, look, they're, look they're nice. Um it's like micro machines, but transformers. That's the way I see them, and that's why I love them. Like, like, like it's kind of it's kind of the way that I felt about the updates to Headmasters in um, Titans Return and stuff, right? Is that they're the same? They're exactly the same as they ever were, but now they're, they're just a little bit more detailed. So instead of instead of a bolt on the arm, so they only move forward, they've got a ball joint, so they can move a little bit around. Yeah, they can, but they can do a yeah, bit they, of, but not tons of wobbly. Yeah, yeah, they 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 can change, they can move a bit, and in general, like what ends up happening is like with um like with with road handler, uh, right? You put you put a slight bit of pressure on them the wrong way, and suddenly everything goes wonky, and off he goes. Yeah, and those legs love to come off too because I've got the black oh, they, they really fucking do, don't they? Maybe yeah. in the future, Jason, thirty years from now, when they just keep re-releasing the same things over and over again, and we get new Titan Masters. Um, if we're gonna do it, I have to do it. The Transformers always like. In the distant future, they now have elbows. The Transformers have yeah. developed elbows. The MicroMasters have <laughs> elbows in the constant yeah. war against the Decepticons. And maybe they will. Yeah, maybe maybe they will. Right. We might have micro joint technology at that point. Everything's just made out of nano machines. <laughs> Who knows? 30 years from now, I'll probably still be collecting Transformers. But at that point, my daughter will have been grown up and say, Dad, you need to stop. <laughs> your daughter will be uh, coming, coming and going. Dad, you need to stop doing the podcast and uh, come talk to your granddaughter. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll be beaming live out of our brains at that point. That's true. Mm. Uh, that is uh, that is about it. It is uh, it is time to end the podcast. We have run a little bit long. It is time to end the show. On the TCCA business front, memberships are being shipped out, and the July winner of the giveaway uh, will be uh, will be sent out along with nominations for club management positions for the next year. Politicking, aren't we, to start nominating your state reps and the people that you want to be repping you? Figure out figure out who is, or uh, well, figure out if you want to represent your own state, I think is the, uh, the point. And uh, look, state reps are responsible for a few things, but not too much. So like if you're going to, um, you know, if you're going to attend Supernova with a table, you'll probably have to figure out how to get some stuff in, recruit some help. Uh, and just organize an occasional meetup here and there. On the table. Yeah. Just at least. Yeah. Figure out what to put on the table as well. Also. Exactly. Uh, all right. Although, look, to be fair, we're probably not attending Supernova that much this year because they charge us too much money to do so. But uh, we are looking for some smaller community events. So, like, if you've got some uh, if you've got some events coming up around you, then let us know as well. You don't you don't have to be a state rep to attend them. If, you know, if you're happy to fly the flag, we're happy to send the flag. And there are literal flags that we can yeah, literal post. flags. I know. I've got one. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, you're, you're actually responsible for them. 
I'm the flag man. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. And yes, uh, because of that, there has been a request by some people for another order of flags. So please keep an eye on the TCCA page because I think the way we're going to do it this year is I'm just going to take everyone's orders and we're just going to bulk them. We're just going to do a big one. Not lots of like, little big sounds one. Sounds like a good idea. Mm. All right, that's it. End of the show. Thank you for listening. If you are watching along with the live record, thanks for checking us out. We have actually been having quite a lot of fun on this record. We've been using new uh, new technology called StreamYard, uh, who uh, have taken over from Hangouts on Air for our production side of things. And I would say it's actually working pretty well. I'm pretty yeah, happy with it. Pretty brilliant. It actually feels a lot more like I'm on television, which makes it a slightly more daunting endeavor. But wait, 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 wait. We can. We can make it Wait. look a little bit more like you're in television Ready? if we zoom us there in, so you can see you can see okay. our full. Yeah, there you go. So All right, so I mean, obviously, if you're listening to the podcast, just imagine something really cool happened. But otherwise, if you're watching from home, hey, more stuff in frame. Yes, yeah, more more stuff is in frame, uh, and yeah, it's just it's easier for us to swap camera angles, and we can keep ourselves on screen while the big stories are hitting on the video. Hopefully, it might actually make the video a little bit more engaging as well, so you can uh, you can watch along with the video on YouTube. So we yeah, that I just keep watching my eyebrows when I'm talking because they have the mind of their own. <laughs> Uh, all right. So uh, thank you for listening. If you all want to find out more about these stories, you will find links to them all and more in the show notes posted to the Transformers Weekly Facebook page and the Podbean site and probably linked from the YouTube video as well. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, you'll find us all in the Transformers Collectors Club Australia page on Facebook and the uh, podcast's Facebook page is, of course, Australian Transformers Weekly. If you're not subscribed, find us in the podcast section on iTunes, Pocket Casts, uh, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, any other streaming service that has a podcast thing, you'll probably find it in there. We are a production of Transformers Collectors Club Australia, a registered club in Victoria run by volunteers who donate their time and money and Saturday nights to make the club and the podcast better for everyone. Our goal is to connect Transformers fans around the country. We do it by engaging the collecting community. And that's where we go out and attend shows and meet other Transformers fans and get them to come and join us. You can find out more information, including affordable yearly membership options, starting at $5 at TransformersCCA.com. All right. That is it from us. We'll be back with more Transformers news next week. I won't be back, though, because, well, I will be back eventually. I won't be back next week because I'll be at TF Nation. And yeah, so I might, I might be off for a couple of weeks. Things to do other Transformer things. That's it. I, yeah, I am dropping Transformer things so that I can do Transformers things. Yeah, but yeah, look, uh, like I said, I'll try to uh, try to record a little bit of content. I did, I did think that I might try to record a little bit of content last year, and it did not go so well. So <laughs> that's all right. As someone who's been to San Diego Comic Con several times, and each time said, "Yeah, I'll produce content when I'm there," and I get like two videos. It's like and, and me going, "Look at everything, guys," then I'm done. Suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, the content is lines of SDCC. <laughs> Nobody wants to see me standing somewhere for 40 minutes complaining about how my ankles hurt. But, uh, yeah, you'll see me in 2020 when I go back to San Diego Comic-Con and I'll pretend to make content then as well. How's that sound? That sounds good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the end broadcast button and people will join you next week and take you through all of the important Transformers news and I'll join back in a couple of weeks' time. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. <laughs>